Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining today's webinar, Tis the Season to Donate, Consumer and Corporate Sentiments Around Giving Season. I'm Anthony Onesto, Chief People Officer here at Suzy. For those of you who aren't familiar with us, Suzy is a real-time market research platform that partners with hundreds of the world's top brands in helping them identify more agile ways to tap consumers for both quantitative and qualitative insights that drive business decisions. Today's conversation is going to be all about charitable giving. Of course, it is the season as we enter into 2021's holiday season. We're going to take a look at what giving means both for consumers this year, as well as different ways employers can get involved in corporate giving. But before we get started, let's all get to know each other just a little bit. So, Amy, first off, I'd like to welcome my colleague, Amy Yawin Chow, who is the Director of Research Strategy here at Suzy. Amy, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Thank you, Anthony. Hi, everyone. I joined Suzy earlier this year to partner with our client success and sales team and support our clients in scope and design and execute their research projects. Prior to SUSI, I have over 10 years end-to-end -end quantitative research experience at Nielsen, focusing on new product innovation and understanding why behind consumers' actual purchase. I'm very excited to be here and share insight from our most recent holiday giving survey. Great. Thank you, Amy. Good to see you. Um, it's also my pleasure to introduce to you Joe Pollack. Joel is founder and CEO of Percent Pledge. Joel, tell us a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. And thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on today. I've got my Suzy purple too, which I just realized a minute before. Um, so let's act like that was planned. And um, yeah, as, as you mentioned, I'm the founder and CEO of Percent Pledge. And, and uh, our mission is, is really to work with companies like Suzy and, and make it, easy and and possible for you and your employees to to support whatever causes and charities you care about most and, and for 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 myself and the company you know we're still quite young but but i quite literally grew up in the space my, my dad's run a, a large nonprofit for about 25 years or so and and i uh didn't start my career doing anything anything related to the social impact space um i, I started it working in SaaS and then B2B strategy consulting, which um, ironically and gratefully kind of gave me this mix of background to, to help carry out this mission. And, and we, I wanted to start giving back at my consulting firm. We didn't have any way to do that. And the more I looked into it, the more I actually did a number of surveys, as well as about 60, 70 qualitative interviews with companies of all sizes, realized just how, uh, how you know, doing good has always been good for business. Now it's required for business. Uh, employees expect and want opportunities to give back. Companies that have social impact programs attract more talent. They retain more talent. And so we wanted to make these types of programs not just accessible to the big enterprises that have corporate social responsibility teams and impact consultants and all of that, but, but make uh, doing good accessible to businesses of all sizes. And, and so that's what we've been up to for, for the past couple of years here and, um, and just recently started our partnership with Suzy, which we're, we're super excited about. Very cool. Good to meet you, Joel. What about you, Anthony? Share with us a little bit more about yourself. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Amy. Uh, I'm Chief People Officer. I've been in human resources for over two decades, uh, the gray hair obviously shows it. Um, been in the startup space for, for that entire time. Uh, I'd like to say I got my MBA in startup um, and really excited uh, thinking about Susie's strategy around giving and, and, and really thinking about, and I love that Joel talked about the quant and the qual that he used to approach um, even starting Percent Pledge, but really thinking about how giving translates into employee engagement, right? And how oftentimes in the past, and I know we're going to get into this, those two things often were separate uh, strategies where the company would give to a specific organization that maybe wasn't specific 
specifically aligned to what the interests are within the company. So I, I'm excited to be here. Been in HR my entire career. So one, let's let's get started. First of all, let's. Uh, Amy, I know we I know we conducted a survey. Shocking, I know. Here at Suzy, it's what we do that asked consumers how they were feeling about giving going into this holiday season. So let, let's let's unpack that a little bit. Can you tell us what types of charities people are looking to donate to in 2021? Yes, absolutely. So uh, from our survey, we discovered that top three charity organizations that people are looking to donate are food-related, which is over 40%, children or family-related, around 38%. The third one is home-day services, around 30%. So those are top three. However, the next one actually is animal related. That is around 26%. So this is to set the stage and help everyone understanding how what our consumers or people are looking for giving in this holiday season. Food, children, family, home day service, or animal. Interesting. And so I, I'm, I'm, and I'm sure our, the folks on the webinar and our listeners are curious on how this really breaks out. Was there anything surprising to you or anything that you found that was uh, specifically surprising in the data? Yes, yes. Uh, the top three, there is no surprise when I see it across gender and age. However, when we look further, by gender, we noticed that that's actually one thing surprised me. <laughs> Between male and female, they have kind of unique differences in the consideration set. Um, men actually prefer more to donate or contribute or volunteer in education much, much more than women. That is about 30% versus 15%, like double percentage differences. Why female are more likely to prefer animal related. So the top three are the same, male and female. However, the fourth one, we see the significant differences that men really prefer to donate for education. That's something that interested me. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. So, so what I'm saying, I'm going to repeat it back so I, so I understand. So men prefer to donate more for education-related charities, where we're seeing in the data women are more focused on animal-related charities. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. So, Joel, that's interesting, right? So, so now you're on the corporate side of giving. Um, does that differ in any way from what you're seeing on that uh, on the corporate side? And what types of charities are, are employees specifically opting to? Because these are consumers on the Suzy platform. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I was, first of all, I thank you, Amy, for sharing that because I absolutely geek out on this stuff. I think similar to, to you as well. So this is both learning for me. And and we, we actually have a pretty pretty similar um, data on the corporate side. And, and, and to highlight some of that uh, and, and the data points that we have, when we uh, launch with a new company, we, we administer what, what we call our, our passion assessment. Um, and so it's this quick um, assessment to understand each employee takes it about three to five minutes to share really at a high level what they care about most, what causes and charities they want to support, as well as how they're currently philanthropically active, you know, donating, volunteering, serving on a board, so and how they want to be philanthropically active at work, and and um, and then we put together a, a passion report for the company, so you can really use it as your blueprint moving forward. And across all of the thousands of employees who have, have taken it just this year, um, youth and education, hunger and homelessness the environment and animal welfare are the top four causes that our entire community has voted on, which is quite similar to, to the results that, um, that, that you found, Amy. And, and so on the one hand, it is um, selfishly quite positive that you're seeing similar things in the data, which then makes me think, okay, we're, we're doing the right thing there in, in terms of gathering that, but also um, the, the one interesting thing that I would maybe note there is um, because we help companies both with their workplace giving, you know, donations, matching donations, as well as 
volunteerism and, you know, organizing team volunteer events. That I think would be the one difference that we see during the holiday season is the volunteer side of things is really not, not totally exclusive, but heavily geared towards hunger and homelessness, food insecurity, um, just, and it's natural, right? Thinking about the holiday season, really Thanksgiving, kicking that off and then giving Tuesday soon after, um, for everyone that, you know, is starting to think about giving back around this time of year, you come to realize, oh, we have so much at our table and it makes you understand that so many other people don't at theirs. And, and so, um, volunteerism around, you know, doing food drives for local food pantries or helping to do, especially during this time, during COVID, um, helping to do deliveries to maybe uh, immunocompromised communities because they're not able to do their normal holiday shopping the same way they might be. So helping nonprofit organizations around um, from a volunteer perspective focused on hunger and homelessness, I think that is really paramount this time of the year, whereas education, environment, animal welfare tend to be more common from a volunteer perspective throughout the rest of the year. And that's interesting because I know one of the things I loved with partnering with Percent Pledge was this passion assessment survey, which I think was going back to my opening statement about correlating and connecting the interests of the employees to the company and what we're what we're you know pushing for and where we're we're providing our charitable focus uh, whether it is money or even time as Joel talked about and so we we have a, a value here called assume nothing validate everything and it really allowed us to assess what the employees actually were interested in uh, it it seems very aligned with what we're finding on the consumer side, which is really fascinating. But it also allowed us to say, OK, we're going to align with you and the company is going to align its efforts around charity and, and donations with the employees, which, again, doesn't seem novel in any way, seems kind of obvious, but oftentimes is a huge disconnect in companies of all sizes. And so it's nice to be able to say, hey, if you support this, we're, we're going to support it alongside you. Now, with, with Joel, with the changes now, I know seasonality obviously has a huge impact, like you, like you noted. How has the return or, you know, maybe we'll start with pre-COVID or during COVID, the kind of things that you were seeing around charitable donations. And are you seeing a shift back to something different now that folks are, you know, some folks are returning back to an office? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. The, to, to the point that we both found in our data around hunger and homelessness being one of the, the, the top causes um, or uh, kind of mm -hmm. most highest priority right now, top of mind for folks um, that was, uh, ironically, not really something we saw even last year, um, which does make sense from thinking about last year, you know, COVID relief, as well as as racial equity were were probably at the top of that list. And and for good reason, given the global pandemic and the resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement and all of social movements going on, as well as just kind of disaster relief generally um, with how many, unfortunately, bad events, whether it's weather or otherwise, are happening throughout the world. And, and this year, um, hunger and homelessness, even before the holiday season, had, had really jumped to the top of the list. Um, and, and at least our kind of working hypothesis is this almost being a um, so sort of an after effect or a second wave of the pandemic in that, you know, now things are starting to go back to normal. Yeah. But what we're realizing is that there still is so many people without a job, so many people that have been forced into poverty as a result of the pandemic. And, and so now the focus is less so on how do we attack COVID and support doctors and frontline workers, and more so a, this kind of empathy and understanding that now that the actual virus is you know, not taken care of, but maybe addressed, uh, what are the lingering effects that it's had on people. Um, and, and then from a, a tactics and programs perspective, you know, we, for volunteering, for instance, 
I'll never forget the week in March in 2019 where we had, I think, 10 volunteer, live volunteer events with different clients organized. And then the same day, they all got wiped off the planet for good reason. Um, they shouldn't have taken place. And we had to pivot quickly. And for the past you know, 15, 16 months, all of our volunteering has been exclusively virtual. Um, and we're starting now, though, to see a little bit of a, a movement back towards some live in-person uh, volunteer events. So as companies have started, you know, hybrid models, bringing people back to work in different ways, um, it, it was throughout a lot of last year, a focus on matching donations in terms of the corporate setting, companies launching matching donation programs and virtual volunteer programs. Now we are starting to see um, more hybrid volunteer programs where there is that live in-person option because it really it's team bonding on steroids. There's nothing that beats that, that connection that employees build together. Um, but also having that virtual option, whether your company is still remote or to be empathetic towards employees that might not feel comfortable going back into a live event setting. One of the things, and, and, and another thing I love about Percent Pledge too, is the idea that we can set up monthly contributions that are monetary, but also this idea of aggregating time and skill sets towards a specific charity through the platform and getting those offline and even online sessions set up. Are there any other broader sort of changes you've seen in giving at all? So you you noted a little bit before or during COVID, COVID related things now, uh, you know, obviously with, with folks still unemployed in certain sectors, you're seeing some changes there. Anything else to note there around the changing landscape of donation patterns, what people are doing? Uh, as you know, as we start getting back in into some sort of normalcy. Yeah, um, the in terms of specific donation patterns, um, a lot of there has been kind of a resurgence as we saw last year. The environment and animals were like pretty much at the top. That that has come back into center focus, especially the environment, um, as well as. Um, a focus on on disaster relief um, and disaster relief can take many different forms, but it seems like there is a new bad event um, that that happens almost weekly or monthly. You know, recently we had a bunch of clients that were running almost like immediate impromptu campaigns um, around Hurricane Ida. And so we were talking to some of our local nonprofit partners down in the New Orleans, Louisiana area, right when we heard that that might be coming, which if you think about it, that's a, a kind of a weird thing for a social impact company to be doing just from the standpoint of like almost doing hurricane planning of sorts. Um, but so many companies that this sort of at a broader scale, we have seen this rise of corporate citizenship, which is beautiful. And and so, so many companies now, they want to be react, pardon me, proactive as opposed to reactive when social movements pop up or these natural disasters hit. And so that has been a, a really big difference in terms of um, the, the donations we're seeing are a lot more so geared towards um, immediate relief efforts. And, and so when anytime something like, like that strikes, we have calls immediately from customers saying, hey... I, I don't want to just go Google and see, you know, the Red Cross or something like that. Is there local organizations, you know, that maybe are, you know, will be more impactful, have a bigger social return on investment for our employees to support. Um, and so having that kind of ability to be proactive in terms of helping employees direct their dollars towards local organizations when things like wildfires or hurricanes strike, that's been a, a, a big difference. And I think, you know, we're starting, especially uh, here at Suzy, we're growing so quickly that we now, and we believe this before, but now more than ever, talent from anywhere, you're, you're now no longer, you know, looking at situations that happen in an HQ type of environment in New York. Now that you're operating in 20 states, you're trying to be proactive and get more localized. So you are, you know, the point here is getting more and more customized around giving from a company perspective that we're looking at these things uh, in that way. So we can impact where our employees are that way they're on the ground, they can help out. So um, it's pretty interesting. You almost have to have like a real time 
dashboard of all the events that are, are happening so you can react to them uh, appropriately. So I want to I want to jump back to uh, to Amy. We're going to jump back to the data, which is super important. Uh, that's what we do. And so I, I love what what Amy does and, and her perspective. So when you talked about our, our, our Susie survey, Amy, you talked about the fact that over a third of consumers plan to give more than they did at this time last year in the survey data. Um, can you dig into those results a, a little bit and give us some insights there? Yes, uh, we ask our respondent, you know, they are plan for holiday giving this year, whether they plan to give more or the same or less. And we do find that one in three respondent plan to spend more than last year on this holiday giving. And I, I think the implication is that people, whoever can, and then capable, they are really willing to donate, to support, especially during this past two years pandemic situation. And this is even driven more by men than women. And this result, we see 44% of men say they will donate more than women, women, which is about 30%. I think another consideration here is that men are more likely to only make charitable donations during the holiday than women. So if we consider men and women, their donation, whether it's on the holiday or it's throughout the year, men are more likely to only make charitable donations during the holiday. So that's why they kind of would want to spend more at this period of time. However, even though one third of people will donate more. We don't want to forget that majority, nearly half of the respondents, still plan to donate the same amount as last year. So it means that people are not changing their behavior much because of pandemic. They would still want to do the same. They would still want to contribute to support the community. 44% actually make regular charity, charitable donations throughout the year. So the implication here for businesses and organizations is that charitable organizations should promote and offer our consumers sufficient and relevant opportunities to donate, not only the holiday, but also throughout the year, just like what Joe earlier said, give people more opportunity to contribute. That's great. And and so, yeah, I, I would imagine our data is a bit skewed because of the holiday. So maybe what we can do is come back to this in Q1, Q, do a, a more quarterly review of this information. And that way we can get an understanding of how this changes. So maybe we could come back. Uh, webinar number two uh, in 2022, and not to put you on the spot, but committing you to another webinar here. Um, I know it's not just about money, although that's probably when we think about charitable donations, the one thing it's opening up our wallets or you know, I guess no one really has wallets anymore, but uh, tapping our, our cards or whatever you want to call it these days. Um, so people aren't just giving money, right? Um, what other ways are, are folks planning to give give back, uh, Amy? Yes, actually, this result is very relevant to the money donation. Remember earlier we mentioned the top three donation is food related, family, children related, as well as homeless. So when thinking about giving back, other way people consider is to just first, top one is directly donate food, especially during the holiday season. A lot of food drive, a lot of uh, pantry, they we require people to support. Second is toy, especially it's holiday, right? Kids like toy, but thinking about a lot of families in need, they would really love help in supporting their toy need for their kids. The third is volunteer. So full toy and volunteer. However, as I mentioned earlier, men are actually more likely to volunteer than women. It's actually significant differences. However, but women, you know, it makes sense. Women are more likely to bake food or dessert for their community, especially during the holiday season. That's interesting. So food, toys, and volunteer are ways outside of just giving money that folks are thinking about volunteering. And then you're saying men tend to volunteer more than women, but women are baking to a certain degree. And again, this isn't the information in the, in the data. Yes. 
Great. Um, and so with all of this, as we think about food, as we think about toys, volunteering, all of those things, what, is this, what does this mean for brands? So how, how, if I'm a brand and I'm looking at this information, what, do you, what are the insights there? You see, all of this are related to people's basic need. Especially during holiday, we want to enjoy the holiday, but some people may have hard time to fulfill their basic need. So this is actually a great opportunity for all the companies, especially CPG companies, to give back to the community because we can support people's basic need, food, clothes, toy, you know, anything necessary for our holiday season, right? So. Brands and company would strongly recommend to use this opportunity to get back to the community, demonstrate your social responsibility, but also use this opportunity to strengthen, strengthen your brand image. Just for example, like earlier Joe mentioned, we corporate can match consumers' purchase during the holiday season to donate to those top three charitable charities people are looking to donate to. As I said, food, children or family related necessaries, or even homeless shelter, right? Or corporate can directly donate products in need or support with corporate volunteering event. Especially this is for the CPG company, food or non-food, etc. However, thinking about other verticals, if you offer services, Another consideration is to collaborate with charitable organization. They are important or relevant to your target consumer. I want to emphasize on target consumer. For example, respondents, they are Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, are more likely to donate toy during holiday season than respondents who are boomer. And it kind of makes sense, right? If you are in Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, you may have kids, younger kids in your home, so you feel more relevant. You want to help other families who have kids. So you are more likely to donate toy. Why older uh, respondent or boomer, you know, maybe they don't have kids in their home, so it's less relevant to them, but they are more willing to donate food than toy. So thinking about your brand, your product, what are your target audience, target consumer, and how can you make your charitable activities more relevant to your target, accordingly to build and strengthen your brand image? Amy, I love that. And I think when we think about percent pledge and our partnership with them here at Susie, that's what we're trying to do at the employee level is identify ways to match the interests of our employees. And what you're saying here is brands could take this data and really understand, oh, this is the, these are the areas we need to focus on to become more brand relevant with their consumers. So in the same way that we're trying to do that with Percent Pledge, using this data will allow brands to be able to do that, not only in terms of vertical or charity, but even from a generational perspective, identifying the different areas and opportunities that they can uh, they can donate. So that, that's pretty interesting. Again, using, assume nothing, right? Use the data to support some of the initiatives, which oftentimes, you know, we're, we're just guessing, unfortunately. So this, that's great information. Thank you so much, Amy. Um, Joel, 37% of our consumers plan to volunteer this holiday season, uh, I think Amy had talked about. So something, of course, that we discuss here at Suzy is how to arrange like volunteer meetups, right? Obviously pre-COVID and post-COVID, um, it's it's challenging for, for all of us sort of getting folks together and, and volunteering, you know, like Amy said, the, the amount of men and women that volunteer is, is going up, especially now that all our employees are no longer just in New York they're, or in different hubs, they're all over. We're now operating in 20 different states, some even internationally, right? So what advice can you give to companies who want to arrange these volunteer opportunities, but see kind of the same challenges that we do. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's interesting because it's it's one of those things that it's one of those challenges that isn't super um, difficult when thinking about it, but that has a lot of nuance from one company to another. And um, and also real quick as well in terms of um, going on the flip side, some of your data earlier was 
was saying, okay, wow, we're on the right track here. Um, on the flip side, seeing that volunteer number, one of the questions that we ask in our, our passion assessments is, is, would you prefer, how would you prefer to give back at work? Would just donate, just volunteer, or both? And an overwhelming majority, 60% of employees across our entire community want to do both. And, and so that combination of giving money as well as giving time um, is, is something that we see as well at the corporate level. And for, for companies that are trying to think about um, that are trying to think about that volunteer riddle or kind of that experiential giving component around the holiday season, there's, there's maybe three things that, that I would suggest. Um, one of which is, um, it is sort of, again, not a novel thing, but a, a, to your notion, which we might steal that value to, to the, the value of assume nothing is, is go and ask um, your nonprofit partners or local nonprofits in your community um, what, what they need, what would be most helpful to them around this time of year? Um, because that's the other piece that I think sometimes gets lost when it's brands doing either cause marketing campaigns on, on a consumer front or doing partnerships to engage employees and, and, and customers as well is, um, is taking for granted that all support is created equal for these nonprofits and, and these different organizations, you know, they have different needs depending on their community, depending on the constituents they serve, the time of year. And so I would say as a starting point is, if you are, are a company organization that has existing nonprofit partners or a list of orgs that maybe you, your company or your employees have donated to in the past, I would start by reaching out to them and saying, you know, hey, um, we've got this, this force for good that's ready to help. Um, what's, what are your top three needs this, this season over the next three months? Um, and, and even if you don't, if you're a company that's just starting from scratch and you don't have organizations that you've partnered with in the past, then uh, even just doing a quick search of who are the local nonprofit organizations in your community um, that, and then going and, and connecting with them. So I, I think that would be um, one place to start. The, the other thing is trying to understand from employees who is ready to go back live versus who still wants to stay virtual, because that can help guide which types of volunteer experiences you prioritize. You know, you, you might have a workforce that from a safety perspective, your office is reopened and is ready to go. But if 90% of your employees don't yet feel comfortable themselves or feel safe going back to that live work environment, then prioritizing something that's virtual is, is probably gonna drive better engagement um, because ultimately that's as well what you want to do, right? You want to, you know, help engage and connect the largest number of your employees possible in, in whatever you do. And, and then additionally, um, it is try and try and kind of, this is going to sound like a funny one, but get kind of weird and different with it. You know, like for instance, we, we, um, and, and I can share this, uh, with, with Katie and the Susie team after to include in the, in the webinar notes, but, um, we came out with, with our kind of now annual second year, um, not nine holiday giving campaign ideas for companies. Four of them were kind of tried and true. Five of them were just out of the box, kind of wacky ideas that, um, that, that it, it really helps to kind of excite employees and get that energy going. If it isn't something that they've done in the past or something that, you know, maybe they're kind of jaded to, or they feel like it is, oh, we haven't put a lot of creative effort into this. And so when you're talking to team members and trying to help them figure out how to volunteer this holiday season, um, try and kind of think outside of what normal corporate volunteerism looks like and, and, and see if you can kind of spark some of that creativity um, because ultimately, you know, giving back volunteering is, it is, there's a neural link between that and happiness. So we're, we're in the business of kind of making people happy, trying to help our communities. And, and it helps to certainly with the engagement piece, if we can have some fun with it along the way. Sure. And, and I love it's, it's often the, the, the most beautiful 
ideas are, are simplistic, right? The idea of going to the not-for-profit and say, what do you need? I mean, I also, I have to imagine majority say money at the beginning, but as you di dive deeper into that, they're giving you other things that they need. Um, speaking of live or, or virtual, right? So now a lot of companies um, are virtual. Suzy is completely virtual, although we'll be going into a bunch of offices in a hybrid model at some point in the very near future. How do you, how do you, what, what things can you advise to companies like Suzy that have this virtual environment uh, to, to navigate volunteer opportunities, right? So if we're not donating, we're talking about don uh, volunteering time. How do you do that in a remote setting? What has worked for some of your clients that you've worked with? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, the answer, I'll tell you, the, I'll tell you one thing, I guess the, I'll approach this from a negative perspective first in terms of it isn't just taking live volunteering and putting it on zoom you know that there is some things that translate but not everything is just the same thing on zoom in a virtual setting um so it is can you think about what what are the activities um especially you know tech companies like suzy the the nonprofit sector is is behind from a technology standpoint and from a data collection standpoint and from a data usage standpoint, being able to make smarter, better decisions that are more data driven, nonprofits generally don't have the same sort of infrastructure and commitment to data, um, and not necessarily because they don't want to, than you know, for-profit businesses do. So, um, so for organizations like Suzy and, and other tech companies, a lot of it is how can um, can we provide our our services our expertise, our kind of technologists that are on our team um, to help the organization be smarter and better, whether it's this holiday season or thinking even beyond that, by this time of year, most nonprofits have their kind of holiday giving plan and fundraising plan in place. Um, but because things like Giving Tuesday and this time of year are so impactful for nonprofits, a lot of them don't have their Q1, you know, 2022 plan in place. And so that's an area that could be really useful from a virtual setting is helping to, um, to create, you know, projections and, and plans for your different nonprofits you might work with um, and helping to make those both take some of that burden off of, of their team's, you know, plate during this time where they're super busy, but also giving them the types of, uh, of expertise and technology and data that they probably don't have access to on a daily basis so that they can be set up really well for 2022. So, so, so one thing there is skills-based is really lends itself well to virtual settings. So skills-based volunteering being instead of going to a nonprofit and if it's a food bank doing a meal prep um, activity, that's traditional volunteer service skills base is, hey, we have a unique set of skills. We would like to provide those to you to help further your mission. Um, that's very good in virtual settings. The, uh, the other thing that has worked out really well is, um, it, is that there still are opportunities. They, re they require a bit more looking around. But to our point about, you know, let's think outside the box is what are the types of volunteer activities and nonprofits that actually are you know, digitally native. And so for, for one example there to, to kind of help paint, paint that picture and make that point, um, humanitarian open street map team, which it is a mouthful of a name. They, they go by hot, um, is, is the better way to think about it. And they're an organization that we've done a really successful virtual volunteer events with, with a number of our, our clients. And I didn't even know, that they existed six or eight months ago. Um, and, and their whole mission is they use satellite imagery and have this open source technology platform to quite literally put people on the map. And what I mean by that is, is so much of disaster relief aid, UN relief dollars, things like that are based on our map. And there's places where it looks like there's one road through this section of this country, when in reality, there's 500,000 people living there. And so there's this massive problem where we are kind of working out of off outdated data. And then people in communities who need support when stuff goes wrong, aren't getting it. And so local municipalities 
they send in applications and and the employees uh, using this open source platform in this virtual volunteer experience with hot it's sort of like a mix of uh, of sims and oregon trail but with like an immediate social impact is employees are like quite literally using satellite imagery to like redraw the maps hmm. so that next time there's a conversation or aid is needed these communities are, are quite literally put on the map. And so something like that, that project is made for a virtual setting and, and works really well. Um, and, and so that was just to make that point of it, it isn't all, let's just do what we were doing on Zoom. Makes sense. And it, it is, it, it's, it's so important even to work with organizations like yours because you, you're, this is the business you're in. You're obviously facilitating these these donations on a monthly you know one-time basis whatever it is but also helping to think through and you're you're on the ground with these with these charities and you're understanding one you're vetting them which is great but two you're also understanding and asking that one question is what what do you need so really really interesting point of view there and like you said get weird or creative about it i think that's a great uh, that's a great takeaway I actually want to follow up this with Joe and thank you for sharing those creative ideas that a corporate can consider about giving. However, according to our survey result, actually there are only less than half of consumers job currently offer charitable giving benefits. And their donation options offered through their employer are actually limited, you know, less than between 30, 40% food, toy, money, etc. So how do you think the percentage can help bridge this gap and increase this percentage? Yeah, that's a great question. And um, I think the to what we were saying earlier about the, the simplest answer is sometimes the best that uh, Hopefully the answer is keep doing what we're doing and do it on you know a larger scale um, is continuing to, uh, to to make it possible for companies of any size that didn't didn't know. So often we meet with companies they are like, wow, we held off on starting a social impact program and helping our employees get back because we know that we don't have the time or bandwidth to do it internally. And we didn't know that there was another other another option. Um, and and I think the other good piece that. The, the positivity I draw from those numbers um, is, is that the um, there's kind of this difference between demand and access. And, and that, you know, when we ask employees across our entire community, would, would having opportunities to, to donate and volunteer through work improve your employee experience? Nine out of 10 say, yes, it would. And so, um, and so I think we're dealing luckily, fortunately, right. With, um, with, with a, an access issue here, which is, is that how can we try and make it more accessible for, um, for businesses of any size to offer their employees these opportunities to give back. And, um, and I think even if it isn't selfishly partnering with us is a great way to do it, but even if it isn't that, um, it's starting by going to your employees and, and saying, you know, Hey, what's one thing that we could do? Um, that co sort of, you know, crawl before you walk, before you run idea is what is one thing we could do this holiday season that that would, you know, A, that we could measure um, the, the impact that we're making, but that people would would feel really good about. And so for these companies, it's it's, I think, really starting small. And and then a, another big piece is being um, it, it's sort of this notion of, of choice and inclusivity. It is you want to provide your employees the 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 choice to support what they care about because people care about different things and so that's an, an important piece and something that we've really prioritized since the beginning. Um, there was another really big study a, a year or two ago. I'm I'm I was going to say I'm intentionally forgetting the name because we're on a Susie webinar, but I don't actually remember the name <laughs> of the organization. And, and it was a, a couple hundred thousand employees that they asked. And um, three out of 10 of those employees that had opportunities to donate and volunteer through work um, didn't because they weren't able to choose the organizations that they cared about most. And so it, there, there also is this big component of, you know, oftentimes when companies are built, are starting and getting going, um, it, 
it just ends up being, you know, let's support, donate to the organization that our CEO is on the board of or something like that, or our leadership supports, which is fine. Um, but it, it, it doesn't really engage employees if, if they don't have a say and if they don't have choice. And so if you're an or a company thinking about where do we start and how can we make sure that this is successful from day one, then I think it's A, ask your employees what they care about. And then B, you know, listen, m make opportunities for them to bring their favorite cause with them to the office, even if that favorite cause is you know, 20 or 30 different things because people care about different things. Um, so, so that's another, that component of, of choice is, is a big one that we see um, even as access is, is increasing. That's interesting. Cause there's, <clears throat> there was a book years ago, paradox of choice when given too many choices, you, you make none of them. And so um, it's, it's important in, in the idea that you're pre-vetting, providing these choices to employees that are based on what their interests are, it's critical, right? You're, you don't want to give too much choices. It's like a 401k in essence, right? Too many choices, people become par um, paralyzed to to making a decision on that. So that's incredible. I, I know we, it's been a great discussion. Um, I'm going to skip ahead here. Um, so you talked about corporate social responsibility. Um, how, how have you seen social impact specifically become a higher priority with employers and, and companies? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. The, <laughs> and I may have mentioned this earlier, we're, we're sort of in the, the, what is it? The great resignation now. Um, uh, we, we also think we're, we're in the, the revolution of good. Um, and, and this, we saw this wave of corporate citizenship after in, in, COVID relief efforts, as well as after the murder of George Floyd. And we were curious coming into this year, was that massive global events that were outliers and a blip in the radar? Or was that part of a, a, an ongoing sea of change? And and we've really seen it be the latter. It the The focus on social impact at the corporate level has only increased this year. Um, I was looking the other day, there's over 110,000 open roles right now for social impact managers. Um, and just that one title that every company now, similar to diversity, equity, inclusion leaders, um, is, is hiring for and starting to resource. And so I think part of it is the, these, the additive effect of these global um, pandemics and or social movements um, with, which is good, right? That's a positive silver lining of some of these horrible things is, is this positive change that's coming out of it. And then the other piece, which hopefully doesn't sound too cynical, is just that companies now have to in order to compete. Like to, today's talent will not work for a company that, that doesn't support them and support their communities and help them make a positive impact on social causes. And, and so that I think has frankly been the, the biggest change that we've seen is this, this difference or evolution of employee sentiment where maybe a year or even two years ago, if you asked employees, Hey, would you like opportunities to, to get back? It was a, it's gone from a desire of theirs to now a demand. And, and so companies are there, you know, frankly, they're, they're responding as they should realizing, okay, our, our most important asset and most important stakeholders are talent. We can't continue to grow our mission if we don't have uh, employees, if we're not creating a culture where today's talent wants to join, you know, stay a part of and tell their friends about. And, and so if they're seeing this just clear, um, impact and data around, okay, if we don't have these programs, then other companies are going to take our talent. They're going to get the talent that we're both going after together. Um, it, it's really, I think that's been the, the leading force is, is employees. It's so you're, you're looking at social impact as a way to uh, attract and retain, which of course is, is warming my heart as, as you're saying it. If, uh, in my role as as chief people officer, are, are there any other trends you're seeing in social impact? So you talked about 
specifically going back to employees, understanding what their needs are, aligning with that, which obviously relates into either recruiting more folks or retaining more folks. Are there any other trends you're seeing specifically in, in social impact that you wanted to, to note? Yeah, uh, probably two more. Um, just to, as, as you were asking that came to mind, um, one of which is uh, a sort of a silly one, but is terminology. Um, it, it used to be CSR, corporate social responsibility, um, which ha has largely gone away in terms of the new wave of programs that are popping up. So more and more each day. And I was I was speaking to some CSR slash social impact leaders the other day about just this is um, is the difference of just how they're saying it is right now more and more social impact programs are popping up across across the country and world versus corporate social responsibility, even though they're largely synonyms. But it's not just kind of a, a revolution and um, and rethinking of how important these programs are, but also how we're talking about them, how we're thinking about them, even what we're calling them. And then the the other the second one would just be the focus on transparency. Um, that that so often was the piece that was ironically left behind when companies would do DIY CSR programs or just stuff internally with cares teams, culture committees um, is, is not you couldn't really measure what you were doing. And and given how important these programs are to employer brand now to that point about attracting, retaining employees is you want to be able to 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 whatever you're doing, make sure you can measure it um, because then you're able to tell that story back to all of your stakeholders. Um, and you should, like you should, companies that are doing these programs, they should market them because they, they're making a positive impact in their community and it should also make a positive impact on their business. So we, Amy, uh, you know, we talked about people planning to give more this holiday season but they're actually also planning to shop more, which of course is great for the economy. Uh, across the board, people are planning on on shopping more. Why do you, why do you think that is? I think it's actually a sign that people are feeling hopeful. Even people may be cautiously cautious, but they kind of optimistic about the pandemic impact this year versus last year. Many people expect that we are able to gradually return to normal and enjoy the holiday. So it's actually a good sign. And this is also implication for brands and companies thinking about how they plan their product or brand strategy throughout the holiday. And I wanna I wanna keep that going with you, Amy, specifically on the next um, next thought here. So we're also seeing an anticipated rise in shopping on big, big discount days, such as Black Friday, Cyber Monday. 71% of our respondents planned on shopping on these days versus 62% that participated last year. What does that mean for something like Giving Tuesday? I think this is actually, again, a good sign, right? Because people, as we mentioned earlier from the data, people look for ways to give back especially people who are able to this year versus last year. So link back to what Joe mentioned earlier, we want to give people the opportunity to contribute to the cause they care about. So thinking about giving Tuesday an uh, event like this, we want to make sure employers and companies offer good options, good activities, events in a different way for their employee to contribute, to give back. Great, thank you so much, Amy. Uh, and Jill, I wanna just give you a, a brief second here before before we say goodbye. Any last parting thoughts other than sign up with Percent Pledge tomorrow? I know this wasn't an advertisement, but I threw it in there. Um, any parting thoughts for uh, you know heads of HR, CEOs, companies in general as they think about partnering with their employees and, and giving back this, this holiday season, but then diving into 2022 in the same way. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Anthony. Um, and I, if it's okay, I'm going to partially put that back on you just in terms of, uh, I, I think as a, a chief people officer, which really is, is our, our, you are our main uh, kind of partner. Most of our clients are, you know, the contacts at their companies are, are their chief people officers. Um, 
I, I'm curious to know, you know, thinking, being an organization that is both committed to data, but wanted to, you know, when you came in and, and we started talking and partnering together, how do we build this culture of giving, right? How do, how do we create a culture that employees, you know, really feel excited about and feel like their passions are, are welcome at the office? Um, I, I guess, you know, what, why was that important to you uh, from the perspective of a people leader um, and maybe what led Susie to, to partnering with Percent Pledge and prioritizing this at the company? Yeah, it's a great, great question. For us, it was really a couple of things. One is the data approach to how we think about these charities, right? Oftentimes, uh, these charitable decisions or what charities to partner with are, are within some sort of team or executive team, anything of that nature, and often so disconnected from the employee themselves. So really understanding at first what the employees were interested in, but it's all about storytelling, right? And the impact. And for us, it's making it super frictionless. I, I always talk about this idea of giving time back to employees, like great HR technologies or great HR departments will give time back to employees like Amy, who are super busy doing the great work that they're doing. And so we don't want to add certain things that, that take time away from them. So creating a frictionless way for them to not only donate money, but time in a very easy way, in a way where they don't get into that paradox of choice was super critical. And then the impact, right? Oftentimes you send money away and Maybe you'll get some sort of trinket or other things from the charity, and that's great, but it, you never really understand what those that impact was. And the one thing I loved about Percent Pledge was the ability to not only have this frictionless way of donating money or time, but then getting the impact report. Like, oh, this is where my money is going. And then a story, like a personalized story. You get an email that's sent to everyone that subscribed to Percent Pledge, everyone at the company saying, this is what Susie, this is what you have done. More importantly, this is what Susie has matched. And by the way, here's a story of someone within that charity that you've chosen uh, where you're having an impact. So for me, the storytelling piece was super, super important. And oftentimes is, is the last thought about peace in these in these equations. So that's why we, we thought Percent Pledge was great. And we're really excited about bringing it into the holiday season, and of course, into 2022. So thanks for putting that back on me, Joel. Well, Absolutely. <laughs> folks, that's all we that's all the time we have today. Amy, Joel, thank you both so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Great conversation. If you'd like to learn more about Percent Pledge, I encourage you to reach out to them at percentpledge.org. Stay tuned, by the way, for more great content from us here at Suzy. We'll be posting a recap of today's webinar on suzy.com in the company coming in the coming weeks and have a couple of more webinars. We close out of the year. So we will see you soon.